Some heroic doses in my day. I, uh, it's weird, man. I'm sober too now. Like all the fucking comedians were supposed to be these dysfunctional fucking pieces of shit, but we're all trying to get our shit together so we don't die. What's up with that? I, uh, I can't do drugs anymore. I don't usually talk about this because it's kind of like a little horrifying and sad, but I, it's the theme of the show, so I'll try it and see if you guys like it. Um, okay, I got really fucked over because I already have like. A genetic disposition towards mood disorders. I basically have the brain chemistry of a newborn baby. Like I never should have done drugs to begin with, right? <laughs> At all. But th I got really fucked over. Like the first time that I got high, like smoking weed, I was with my soccer team. I was a sophomore in high school. We were in Italy for some reason, like playing against these European teams and getting our asses kicked because we were American soccer players number one, and we were just smoking weed in our hotel room in Italy, which was not helping us beat the Italian teams. And so I got high for the first time. And it's okay. I find this funny. So you guys can laugh too instead of being like, oh, when I tell you, this is really fucked up, bro. Okay, so I'm smoking weed for the first time when I get high and I'm laughing, I'm laughing so much. Like I have this amazing case of the giggles and it's so much fun. But then my soccer team who are a bunch of dicks, like they were all fashion hippies. You know, like waspy fashion hippies? If you don't know what that is, it's basically like a person who wears a Grateful Dead t-shirt, but then like a J. Crew roll neck sweater on top of it. <laughs> and then they have like a hat from some obscure, like Pennsylvania Little Art School where they play lacrosse, you know? And then they wear Birkenstocks, and then they're just really racist and homophobic. Like that's their really weird, conflicting fucking world, you know? So I'm baked out of my gourd, like, oh, this is amazing. And then they fucking tied me up with medical tape. Yeah, yeah. And then they put me underneath the shower. I love that Dima's laughing. They put underneath the fucking shower and they sprayed like soap and shampoo in my eyes. Yeah, the first time I was high and loving it, the only way to describe that spectrum of emotions is as though I was watching Richard Pryor's Live on the Sunset Strip while simultaneously being fucking waterboarded. That's literally the only way I can describe that world. So I can't do drugs now, Mar! <laughs> my name's John. Well, I did a bunch of acid and it was really scary, but it's good. <laughs> but yeah, man, and I drink a lot. And that's all I got left, but now I'm not even doing that. Are you guys ever drinking here tonight, though? Round of applause? Yeah? yeah? You guys ever drink fucking recklessly? I know that you do. Um, let me ask you this, because we're in New York. Have you guys ever stayed out drinking so late that by the time you end up taking the subway home, it's very clear that everybody else in the subway is headed to work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you done that? Some of you yes, you have. It makes you feel gross, man. It makes you feel like the leper of the train, and then you're gonna like die alone in the woods because you're unworthy of love. That's how it makes you feel. The first few times. <laughs> then after that, you can make a conscious choice. You can decide instead to feel like the champion of the train, huh? You can decide to feel like the coolest person on that train, and everybody else is a bunch of big time nerds and they're jealous. Yeah. And you can stand up, and you can proclaim to the entire train. You can go, hey, Hey, what's up, nerds? What's up, big time nerds? I see all y'all staring at me, judging me, They're jealous. They're jealous. Cause I was out last night partying like a rock star. What'd you do last night? Oh, you ate dinner with your loving family? Gross. That is disgusting to me and my sensibilities. I drank enough Jaeger, might sort of permanently alter the sequence of my DNA. Oh, you watch Bones on television? That show sucks! Sucks! I had sex with a complete stranger and I remember it just enough so I could brag about it to all my friends. It was gross. Oh, you said your prayers and went to bed? Adorable! I punched a mechanical bull in the face and broke my thumb. So have fun pushing papers around your office all day while I'm at home in my living room chilling with my shirt off, watching reruns of Married with Children while I puke into a garbage can and question where my life went wrong, y'all. Just like a real rock star. That's what you guys should do next time you're in that situation, man. That's what I said. I'm not a rock star, I'm a comedian. I'm so angry. I get furious. For reasons I shouldn't, like I'm walking down the streets of Portland, Oregon, right? Minding my own, playing it cool, you know what I mean? Yeah, you guys, you know. 
And uh, this guy walks up to me, you know, and he hands me this book. He goes, oh, do you have this yet? He gives me a book. I look at it. So it's like, it's like, Hare Krishna and the way of peace and hugs. You know what I mean? And like, I flip out at him. I flip out. I go like, I don't want this fucking book. And I give it back to him. And then the best part is he goes, okay. I love that. Because that means at first, like, I was like, this guy's fucking insane. But then after I did that, the Hare Krishna guy was like, this guy's fucking insane. You know what I mean? Like, I out crazy the crazy dude, you know? And I shouldn't have gotten so mad. Fine. But seriously, dude, you're going to be a Hare Krishna in 2011? That's your fucking move? Really? You think that's going to pan out for you in this information age? You with the dancing and the haircut and the robes and the no possessions? There's a new fucking Android-based app that can read your brainwaves, you asshole. You don't even have an app, you dick. And like, how good is your book going to have to be? It's going to change me? John F. O'Donnell? J-5? Johnny O'Donnell, the white red fox of comedy? All right, nobody calls you that, but it would be cool. You know what I mean? Fuck you. And why you pick me, Harry Krishna the guy? Of everybody. Why me? You can just like stare into my soul and realize that I've experienced three extreme manic episodes over the past 11 years? <laughs> All of which have given me an inflated sense of self to the point where I was truly and deeply convinced that I was the Messiah. True story. Do you know how fucked up that is? You know that freaks people out? Do you know how embarrassing that shit is? You know what I mean? And basically my biggest nightmare in the world came true where I lost my marbles publicly and I've had to work so hard to claw my way back in this hyper competitive super cutthroat entertainment industry and now it seems like no matter how successful I get it's never going to be enough because I have this deep rooted sense of inferiority and insecurity in the back of my head because I'm a person who's had to publicly explain that I've dealt with mental illness. You know how long it took me to say that without crying? You know what I mean? And my entire sense of spirituality is just totally fucked up, you know? Because the times that I felt the most alive and closest to God I've been told is due to chemical imbalances in my brain where the synopses were firing and took for the, the neurotransmitters and something like that. And how can God be all good and all loving if he would do this thing to me? I'm just really lost and confused and lonely and I'm trying to get off this constant hamster wheel of desire and pain. Well, how's a Harry Krishna guy? Upon second thought, it really does appear that you've nailed your demographic here. <laughs> Cause yeah, man, I'm manic depressive, like for real. <laughs> Not like, oh, he's moody. <laughs> like for real. Like doctors say so. A whole bunch of them. It's also called bipolar disorder, right? But I hate that term. I just hate the way that sounds linguistically. It makes me feel like I'm some sort of broken robot. <laughs> man, bipolar disorder. Help me. <laughs> nothing in between. Just have a and sit. Bipolar, polar opposites, magnets. I'm addicted to playing with magnets. Help me, bipolar, robot man. Like, I don't want society to view me like that, man. Plus, Jimi Hendrix wrote a really cool song called Manic Depression. There's also a song called Bipolar Disorder. That song would suck. I'd probably be like, I got bipolar disorder, yeah. Which means inevitably it is my fate to become the estranged uncle <laughs> That nobody talks about at family gatherings Cause last thing they heard I was living in an abandoned ferry boat someplace in the East River True story <laughs> And I was telling everybody I was the Messiah True story It is not cool to tell people y'all the Messiah could I possibly think I was the Messiah? I no longer think I'm the Messiah born. I did, I felt super special like a big time celebrity because really who's more famous than him? Nobody. And now I'm normal again and just bored, relatively speaking. Messiah! I got bipolar disorder, yeah. I got bipolar disorder. I thought I was going to get married to this French woman named Ellie Perry. We're going to move to a royal part of Ireland and work on the post office. Even though I thought I was the Messiah, I thought somehow we were going to give birth to like the super Messiah, true story, Messiah. <laughs> so now when I meet other women, I can basically only get 95% hearts. because I'm like, yeah, you're cute, but you're not Messiah, baby, make it cute, peace out, Messiah. Oh, I got bipolar, it's all into a bodega in Long Island City, Queens, and traded my iPod for a pig and a cheese sandwich. <laughs> a taco taco and a Fifth Avenue chocolate candy bar. I feel like I got the short end of the stick on that one. Oh, I made me a bunch of cops, threw up my apartment and dragged me out of it, put me in a state hospital.
Chicago and Queens, who I was roommates with a guy named Mr. Who, only communicated by spitting on the ground, eating oranges. What the fuck is going on in my life? Oh, no. And then I was in the hospital, I came to a realization that everything I believed was total bullshit, and I burned my entire life to the ground and pushed away all my friends and family. The only way to describe that overwhelming amount of pain and humiliation is though I was a lion who'd been reduced to a worm but was tortured by the memory of what it was like to be that lion. Holy shit, that's poetic. Every day for six months, I watched Burn Notice in USA because I felt like I didn't deserve to watch good television. <laughs> and then I started writing stand up comedy, and I clawed my way out of a psychological abyss that is unspeakable. And just take a look at me Sounds way too cool to me. What it means. <laughs> right? It sounds like it should be a superpower. <laughs> Don't mess with Steve, he's got bestiality. <laughs> he can turn into a fucking panther. <laughs> my name is Steve. I call upon my powers of bestiality. Not to fuck animals. But to fight crime. <laughs> turn me into a con. and moaning and complaining I do, I don't even feel justified in my psychological pain at all. Because at the end of the day, I'm just a white man living in America. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? And every time I complain, all I hear in my head is, eh, I'm a white man living in America. Everything's so difficult for me. <laughs> yeah, sure, my family could afford to buy me every new video game system as it came out, which is an allegory for the relative economic comfortability I grew up with. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but how come black women won't fuck me? They're not attracted to me. Robert De Niro gets to have sex with black women. Well, he says, wife, she's black. Why not me? White man, American. Ugh. He has sure three billion people have less than a dollar a day, and a child dies of a starvation related illness every six seconds in the world. But how come the video chat, the video chat app on my smartphone only works sometimes? Yeah, white man, America. So stop here complaining and enjoy the rest of the show. I'm John F. O'Donnell. Thank you so much.